and it's the only place you get to see him sing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jimmy Nesbitt. Beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. My lover stands on golden sands and watches the ships that go sailing somewhere. Beyond the sea, she is there watching for me. If I could fly like birds on high, then straight to her arms I'd go sailing. It's far, yes it is, beyond the star. It is near beyond the moon. I know beyond a doubt my heart will soon we will meet I know we'll meet by the shore we're gonna kiss just like before and all we will be beyond the sea and never again will I go sailing no more sailing time to get bailing before I start flailing, must stop this wailing, sailing. No reason whatsoever to sing that song. I just fancied it. <laughs> Bobby Darn currently turning in his grave. Good evening and welcome to the 2009 British Independent Film Awards. My name is James Nesbitt and I'm your host for the evening. In fact, I'm proud to say this is my fifth but final year behind the podium. <laughs> Apparently I act too. Could someone tell Sue Latimer that's here? But presenting here is a job that requires you to be calm, confident, but most of all, available. <laughs> Some things don't change though, I'm still singing. And in fact, there was a toss up tonight between this job and the X Factor results show. However, my daughters say my singing spoils it, so they begged me to be out of the house so that they could watch it in peace. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is the 12th year of the awards that celebrate all that is good in British independent film. Actually, uh, nevertheless, a uh, non-film related story here is my favorite word uh, because of something that happened at the US Open Tennis Championship uh, many years ago. Uh, in the 70s, uh, uh, it was held at Madison Square Garden. Uh, there was a packed house, you could hear a pin drop when the announcer, stadium announcer boomed out, ladies and gentlemen, before the 75th US Tennis Open final, the Illinois National Guard will present our colors to arms and Miss Gladys Thomas will sing our national anthem. And the silence was broken by a voice from the bleachers shouting out, Gladys Thomas sucks cocks. <laughs> Nevertheless, here to sing. <laughs> True story. Anyway, as always, it's been a very strong year with some exceptional films nominated this evening. The topics in the best film category cover Teenage Angst, Misspent Adolescence, Youthful Promise, Frightening Isolation, and Being Totally Out of Your Depth at Work, which is incidentally how I pitched my autobiography. <laughs> but having caused something of a stir at this year's GQ Awards, making their guest of honor storm out, well, stagger out, by making an innocent reference to her association with certain recreational activities, I certainly shall not be making that mistake again. So you can forget any reference to Sir Michael Caine's long battle with the horse tranquilizer ketamine, <laughs> or Daniel Day-Lewis's obsession with cheap Sambuca and crystal meth. <laughs> However, David Morrissey's continuing addiction to Liverpool Football Club is something not so much to be pitied, rather derided. 
You sad scouse fool. <laughs> Defining a British independent film has become almost as difficult as finding the funding for it. With most of the films here tonight greenlit before the spectacular collapse of the We Play You Pay Club, or Global Financial Systems, as they're sometimes called, it's going to be even harder for those coming up behind. In fact, there were times this year when it seemed as if Armando Iannucci's In the Loop was in danger of seeming like a rather conservative portrait of the workings of our government. This, after all, is a year when politicians have humiliated the British people with the revelations of their small-minded penny-pinching, terrible taste in housing, and almost criminal inability to stand up for themselves. After all, why cavort naked at a topless pool party with the Italian Premier when you could be filling out an expenses claim for two new toilet seats and an Ikea lamp? <laughs> but if there's one thing you can depend on, it is upon the resourcefulness of the talent working in our industry. Suffice to say that the fact that the Biffa uh, jury received almost 200 nominations, sorry, 200 submissions, 200 nominations, you would be in for a long fucking night. Uh, <laughs> 200 submissions is a testament to the commitment and dedication of our independent filmmakers. If last year saw a great showing from the Irish, this year it is the woman making a big impact, catching three of the five nominations for best film and being represented in most of the other categories. I've always enjoyed the company of women and having a, uh, a mother, three older sisters, a wife, two daughters, I've benefited from their unique experience and wisdom which has helped make me who I am. <laughs> At least that's what my therapist tells me. And seeing as how his words to payment ratio was almost as high as my voiceover fee, I'm inclined to agree. Every little helps. <laughs> but I do genuinely love these awards, not only because of the talent that they recognize, but also as they give those working in the industry here in the UK the chance to meet up, swap notes, uh, swap notes and ponder once more on the kind of project that might suit a 40-something Irish actor, some say is one of the most talented of his generation, <laughs> versatile, award-winning, with a nice singing voice. I am, of course, talking about Liam Cunningham, so let's give him a big hand when he comes out. <laughs> but it's not just about the big projects this evening. The short film category is always highly competitive. Simon Neal's beautifully shot wash days Sam Hurd and Richard Penfold's tragic leaving with a great performance from Kirsten Waring. Love You More is Sam Taylor Wood's second film in contention. Conor, McCormick, Conor McCormack's brilliant Christmas with Dad. And finally, Derek Jacobi positively sparkling in the lead role Tristram, in Shitram Shapiro's Sydney Turple Bomb. And in fact, several of our more senior actors are recognized in the Best Supporting Actor Award this year with the nominations reading like one of the truly great film casts, Jim Broadbent, Alfred Molina, and John Henshaw, with support from the precious young talents of Michael Fassbender and Tom Hollander. Well, I say young. <laughs> First time directors are nominated for the Douglas Hickox Award, and it was the general bequest from the great director's estate that led directly to the creation of this evening's event. Nominees include actress turned director, Samantha Morton, Artist turned director Sam Taylor Wood, satirist turned director Armando Iannucci, philosophy bachelor turned director Duncan Jones, and Peter Strickland, who turned a £25,000 bequest from his uncle into a stunning directorial debut. <laughs> I'm glad to say that the documentary category is as strong as ever, with challenging, frightening, heartwarming, and moving films in contention. To make a film in this day and age which can distill complicated global or national issues into something we can all understand and be moved by is quite an achievement. And I can assure you that all the films in this category are worth watching if you can, although I wouldn't recommend watching them back to back unless you know the number of a good priest. <laughs> Before we get to the awards, I'd like to finally mention the best technical achievement category. For years, we've exported excellence in the filmmaking craft all over the world with our cinematographers, production designers, costume designers, composers, and the rest being some of the most sought after talent in the business. They also have to put up with actors, and for that alone should be recognized in what some are calling the Christian Bale, I'm gonna kick your ass if you don't fucking shut up for a second award. <laughs> Did us all a big favor there, Christian, thanks. Anyway, to the awards. The first one this night is for Best Foreign Film. It's a great shame Mickey Rourke can't be here to follow the fortunes of The Wrestler, 
for no other reason than he's the one man whose style sense is stranger than Elliot Groves. <laughs> Here to present the award, the extremely talented Harry Treadaway, and a young actor who recently cast off the innocence of seven years in Harry Potter by appearing with me in the sex, drugs, and drink-fueled Belfast experience that was Cherry Bomb. Can't remember what the film was about. Please welcome Harry Treadaway and Rupert Grint. <laughs> 